Okay, our next example is going to focus on the meniscal attachments and the roots. It's going to be a child, but let's start out blank screen and draw our meniscus again. When you're looking from the top down, it can be a little difficult to see the roots. They're kind of wispy. They dive down towards the tibia. So you're going to have a posterior root. You're going to have an anterior root. You're also going to have an anchor, not in everybody, but in most people, you're going to have an anchor in the front, which is known as the transverse meniscal ligament of Winslow that goes from meniscus to meniscus to the other side. And yes, there is such a thing as a posterior transverse ligament. It occurs in about one in every 5,000 individuals, so you're not going to see it very commonly. We also said that on the medial side, for the most part, you're going to have short, stubby little attachments to the capsule all the way around. But they're pretty tight. And because they're pretty tight, when you tug on Superman's cape, they're more likely to break. So meniscal capsular true separations are more common on the medial than the lateral side because you just have less purchase, you have less play. We also said that the meniscus, when you view it in cross-section, you can see in the mid-coronal plane a little better these attachments. They're a little bit longer than they are in the front and the back. And that's why most of the separations don't occur in the mid-coronal plane. They occur where the attachments are shorter, in the front or in the back, mostly in the back. So when you look in the mid-coronal plane, and let's say you've got the tibia underneath, we'll make the tibia blue also. And now we'll draw the ligaments. Let's take the ligaments in green. You've got a menisco tibia ligament, also known as the coronary ligament. Again, best seen in the coronal plane. And a longer menisco femoral ligament. And that one would go up to the femur, and I assume you can imagine the femur. So that's the stabilization of the medial meniscus. Now, tears of the medial meniscus root are not uncommon in patients with a pivot shift. That tear can hit part of the root, just like any other ligament. It can go all the way through the root. It can also go all the way through the depth of the root into the screen, or all the way from anterior to posterior. So you can, if you have the resolution, differentiate what is complete from front to back and what is full thickness from top to bottom or from proximal to distal. Most of the time, root tears are not the entire ligament. You still have a little bit of ligament tethering the meniscus and so it doesn't migrate all the way out or start slipping because there's no attachment. An equivalent to a root ligament injury, as we previously discussed, would be as if you cleaved off a whole segment of meniscus and now this portion of the meniscus migrates one way and this part stays, o stays over with the root. Let's go over to the lateral meniscus. The lateral meniscus is actually a little more C-shaped. I should have made the medial meniscus a little more kind of banana shaped, but I didn't. You'll have to forgive me. The lateral meniscus is more C-shaped. And the attachment story with regard to the root ligaments is the same. So I'm not going to redraw them for you. Uh, you know, you can imagine they're kind of little wispy ligaments that go down towards the tibia. But the major difference on the lateral side is twofold. We've got arising from the popliteus hiatus, proximal, and on the lateral side, the popliteus tendon. So there's the popliteus tendon coming around. And it be it's going to become the popliteus muscle. Then we also have another ligament. And that ligament is known as the ligament of Risberg. The ligament of Risberg will come off the posterior superior margin of the meniscus. And then if we were looking coronally, we're not right now. Here we're axially with the letter A. But if we were to look coronal, what would the Risberg ligament do? It would do something like this. It would come off the tip of the lateral meniscus right here. So it would have an oblique course from the lateral meniscus supramedially. 
Now, we, that's a little hard to appreciate in the axial projection. But what you can appreciate is that the ligament of Risberg is going to have an interface between it and the meniscus, which I've drawn in green. And if you look at that interface in cross-section, let's do that. Let's make our meniscus blue again for consistency. And let's assume we have a sagittal slice right here. What might we see at the interface of the Risberg ligament? Well, we'd see the interface in green. And then we'd have a little black structure, which you might confuse as a piece of meniscus. Well, it's not. It's the ligament. So I'm going to color it yellow because I like yellow. But it's not really yellow on the image. On the image, it's going to be black because it's a ligament. And that appearance, that angle, that interface is going to persist for about two slices. And then it goes away. Unless this area, which is weak, propagates a tear, which I'll, I'll make the tear in orange. So if a tear comes off here, now you've got something related to the interface of the ligament of Risberg, and we refer to these as the series of Risberg rips. But that's a story for another day. I'm interested in the overall anchoring of the meniscus and the roots. So let's get back to the popliteus tendon. Let's look at a sagittal view at about the mid-posterior horn level. So let's draw our meniscus in blue for consistency. And behind it, we have the popliteus tendon, which then courses down. It sends a small little fascicle to the fibular head, known as the popliteofibular ligament. It sends one over to the tibia, known as the popliteotibial ligament. And there are two posterior penetrating fascicles. When you're close to the midline of the knee, one of these fascicles is going to be a little longer than the other. And when you're out towards the periphery of the knee, they change. Then the bottom one gets a little longer. That's not so important, though. You have an upper fascicle and a lower fascicle, a set of ones near the midline, and a set of ones near the periphery. So you have suprolateral, infralateral, supromedial, inframedial, and they perforate the popliteus tendon. And they serve as anchors for the lateral meniscus. For when they're torn, this meniscus is going to start floating that way.